Hello students, welcome to lesson number 75. In this lesson, I'm going to share with you something extremely powerful for whenever you train tactics. Now, I know that the moment I put on the title, this is a secret, it's going to help you improve faster. You are already like predisposed, like, okay, this better be a secret, this better be something I don't, I don't know, it better be good. Well, I can tell you that this is something good and it's going to help you in many, in many ways. I use it myself and I have been using it with many of my students for years and I can tell you it helps a lot and it, it also makes a lot of sense. So I wouldn't be surprised if you already know it. So I'm going to tell you right away, guys. Now, the reason why I think this is a secret in a way is because the first time I said it to someone, I was in a tournament, in a scholastic tournament, and all of the coaches, we were outside waiting for the round to be over. We were just looking through the window, looking at our students' games, and one of the coaches mentioned that his students, they had a hard time Closing, a, closing their game. So he would be looking through the window, they were ahead, and when he would turn around and he would look again, they would be already losing the game, a game that they were already ahead. So I just said what I do with my students, and they looked at me in a way that I don't know if they were like, okay, this is good, or it just doesn't make any sense. So you guys are going to let me know, and this is what I'm going to do in this lesson. I picked five tactics, five first exercises for you to do. If you're just in a hurry, and you just want to know what uh, what I have to say quickly about the secret, then you could get it now in a few seconds. If you have the time, I really recommend that you do this the right way and that you try to solve this position. So this is what I do, guys. And this is the first position that we're going to solve. So if I'm doing this tactic, I have a tactics book at home. I, I just do it online. I don't really mind it. You could just put this tactic on an engine. So I'm here on listchess.org. And for this, you could go to tools, board editor and over here you could move the pieces around and just put exactly what you have on your tactics book you put the exercise here i'm just going to put it down here because i have the, the code and i'm going to do flip board because it's black pieces to move and then i just put it here and i try to find it when i finally find it guys i go to where it says continue from here and it is going to i'm going to choose computer i'm going to choose the most difficult computer and in this case, it is black pieces to move. So I'm going to be the black pieces, right? So if you want to work on this on your own, you want to find the, the answer, pause the video right now and try to figure it out. I already found it. And basically, this is what I'm thinking. So in this position, um, I see that my queen is down here. I could take on f1. I could take on f2, on e3. And this is something else, guys. Whenever you're playing a game, Many of you don't even take the time to look at these moves. It just looks bad. You know that they could take you and you just ignore it. You stop it right there. Well, I encourage you to look at every move, even if it looks bad. It's going to take you a second. And the more you do it, the faster you're going to get to it. You're going to be like, okay, uh, queen takes pawn, queen takes pawn, queen takes rook. Uh, and, and also try to at least look one move deep. So if I take that pawn, they take me back. Do I have a check? Yes, they could hide. Oh, this is not good. And then you do the same thing again. If you do this often, you're going to get to the point where in one second, you just consider all of these little moves because some of them sometimes might make sense. So this is just a, another tip. Now, in this specific position, I realized that this move forces them to take my queen. And then I have check. The king goes to e2. And if I only had another rook to be on this rank, that would be checkmate, right? So that gives me this idea. Rook a to b8. When the queen moves, then I'm going to sacrifice, followed by check and checkmate. So this is the answer, guys. Now, what I do is I put it on the computer. Remember, I'm trying to finish this versus the computer. And when I do my move, the computer is going to, of course, pre uh, prevent the checkmate. So you see, they're going to give me the queen. Now, guys, many of us, we do the tactics, we find the answer, and we move on to the next one. So what I really recommend, if you're not doing it already, is to, once you do the tactic, try to finish this position versus the computer. I don't know about you, but I have been many times, many of my students, uh, we've been in tournaments and we come out of the, of the game and we're like, oh man, we had him. I was winning in this game and I don't know how the game uh, slipped through my hands. It just, they just escaped. Well, if you do this enough, you're going to get so good at closing your games. You're going to know how to finish it. Because trust me, even if you're winning by so much versus the computer, the computer is going to give you a really hard time. So. You don't have to do this every time you do tactics, but from time to time, practice this. Okay, I found the answer. I'm winning by a lot. Can I close this game against the computer? And guys, you let me know in the, in the comments what you think 
Uh, I really want to know if you think this is nonsense or if you think that it might help you. And if you try it, of course, let me know uh, how it goes. For me personally, for my students, I can tell it makes the difference. Now, these other exercises, you're going to see them in front of you. So we have the first position that we just went over. Uh, the second position is going to be the white pieces to move. And I'm not going to be telling you what kind of tactic you're looking for. This is going to be uh, looking for the best move to win material or to do checkmate. So you could pause the video every time a new position comes up and see if you can figure it out. Now, guys, it's going to help me a lot if you put in the, in the comments of this video the answer, at least your thoughts. These exercises, I picked them based on all the feedback that you're giving me from other lessons. Like in the last lesson, many of you guys, you put uh, your thoughts. Some of you did extremely well. You put a long paragraph explaining everything. It gives me an idea of who you are, of what you need. So if whatever you tell me today, I'm going to consider it to plan the future lessons. So I really appreciate it if you leave me in the comments whatever you're thinking. If you found the answer, if you missed it. Also, if you think this is too difficult for you or easy. Anyways, any kind of feedback is going to help me help you better, okay? So this is number two, white pieces to move. Then number three, it is also the white pieces to move. I like this one a lot. Uh, so let's see how, um, if you can figure it out. The next one, it is going to be also the white pieces to move. And then finally, we have uh, position number five, and it is the white pieces to move as well. So now I'm just going to go back and we're going to go over the answer one by one. Okay, guys, position number two. This one is pretty difficult. If this is like checkmate in four or five, something like that. But the first move that should have come to mind, the first candidate move, should have been rookie eight. I want to look at four sig moves. I want to look at checks, especially since I know that they're about to do checkmate on, on h2. So after rookie eight, and guys, you should know this by now, but we're going to do it in our head, trying to visualize and after I'm going to actually move the pieces. So rookie eight, they could do two things and I hope that you considered everything that they could do. So rookie eight, they could block with the bishop or they could go king h7. Now, if king h7, very easy. We have a fork and we're going to get that rook that's winning material. Now, the difficult one is if they block with the bishop. Now, we have no time guys to move the knight and try to take with the queen. We are about to get checkmated. So we have to continue with a forcing continuation. So again, rookie eight, bishop f8. We have to take on f8, decoying the king onto uh, f8. So we're luring the king onto f8. And now we have knight f5. Now guys, with the knight on f5 and the king on f8, if they block with the rook, we're going to do rook d8 checkmate. The knight is controlling these two squares. Now, if, again, after rook e8, bishop f8, we take, they take, knight f5, the king goes back to g8, we have to lure the king, we have to do a decoy to get the king to f8 again. So that's when the queen goes to f8, sacrificing the queen. And if the queen takes, again, my knight is here, and my rook is going to go to d8 and checkmate. If instead, again, after rook e8, bishop f8, um, rook takes, king takes, knight f5, the king goes back to g8, queen is sacrificed on f8. If instead of taking, they just go to h7, then queen g7 is checkmate because the knight is helping the queen. All right, guys, maybe this was really blurry, very confusing, but now we're going to do it on the board. So rook e8. If they, again, if they go here, we have the fork and we get the, uh, the rook. If instead they block, check. Discover check. If they have blocked over here, checkmate. These are covered by the knight. If instead they just go to g8, queen of eight. If they go to h7, checkmate. If they take, then checkmate. All right, guys, so I know it was tough. The next one I think is going to be a little bit easier, but I hope that even if you didn't find it, I hope that you tried to visualize and calculate a little bit. Even if you don't find the answer, like we talked about in a few, a few lessons ago, the fact that you're trying, that you're practicing is going to help you. And now that you saw these ideas of the decoy, it is more information that you have in your database. All right, so position number three, this is one that 
I wouldn't be surprised if none of you found it. This is a very tricky one. So it's not that complicated, but it could be tricky. So anyways, the first move here that should come to mind, guys, is again a forcing move. I'm looking at rook g1 check. Now, if the king goes to h5, we have the two rook checkmate pattern, right? That's checkmate. Now, if the king goes to h6, protecting that pawn, then that's when you have to find the very nice moves. And the move is going to be bishop f8, check. Again, my rook came here first. Now, when I do this move, if they just move up, checkmate. Now, if instead, after I do check, king h6, bishop f8, the rook takes. Well, that's exactly what I wanted. I deflected the rook, and now my own rook wants to get onto this file, remember? To do the two rook checkmate. So I'm going to do rook d3, and they cannot stop the checkmate on h3. So again, check, check, and now this is the move that is really hard to, to find. It is not a check, it is just a very precise move. It's going back also, so many people might have missed it. But it is a very nice move, guys. And it's another pattern, another idea for you to be uh, familiar with. So we just go back very quietly. There's nothing they could do to stop the checkmate. Okay, position number four. I think this is the easiest. Uh, maybe you didn't find it so easy, but uh, in my opinion, it should be easier than the, than the other ones. Now, this one, guys, we have to look at moves like queen a8 and queen c3. Now, if you look at queen c3, notice that the only move that safely blocks a check is queen g7, and then we have check. Only move that blocks the check safely is queen g8, and we just take check maybe because the bishop is over here. So check diagonally, check, and then checkmate. All right, only one more, guys. And after this, uh, this next one, you're going to see me doing the first one against the computer just for, for just for you to see how I finish it. I know that sounds pretty easy, but you see the computer makes it really challenging. Okay, guys, so this one is a little bit tough because if you looked at candidate moves, you looked at moves that are check, they're forcing, you might have come across this move. Now, the problem with this move is that it almost works. If they take, it would be nice if we could do this move right away, but the pawn is in the way. And if I did this move first, something like pawn to b3, it is too slow. They could do so many things to stop whatever I'm trying to do. So the move is removing this pawn with a tempo. So we go pawn before, and now either they give me the queen or they allow me now to do this. I take, if they don't take, by the way, I just do my battery and I'm doing checkmate. If they take, then bishop b2, and that's checkmate. All right, guys, so now let's go to the very first one and let's see how the computer does, uh, how I do against the computer. So again, guys, I'm here on the chess. I'm going to Tools, uh, Board Editor, and then here you could just move the pieces around and put whatever position you like. Or in my case, I have my code here to make it faster. I'm going to flip the board, continue from here with the computer, and I want to play against the most difficult one. And I want to be the black pieces. And I'm going to do my first move. All right. All right, so of course I have to take. And now, guys, I have to be extremely careful. This computer it's definitely going to give me a hard time. I know this is pretty easy. I even have a pass pawn, but if I'm not careful, it's gonna get me in trouble. It's happened to me before. My plan is to go after that king if I could, or simplify the game. If I simplify the game, this should be pretty easy. So let me start by doing, okay, can I do something like, ah, I'm thinking already of this, followed by rook b2. Can I do that? Mm. Well, you know what? Let me just keep it simple. Let me go rook b5. So look, my bishop is two squares away from that knight. And that's a good way to control the knight. Okay, it looks like they don't really care. Uh, so let me go queen c2. I want to get that pawn. I don't want to give them any counterplay. Huh, so if I take, they're going to go rook c1. Hmm. Well, look at this. I'm going to get rid of this knight. And I know it doesn't make much sense, guys, but I just want to stay out of trouble. That's it. Uh, okay, I got to take here to protect the pawn. So to me, it's just leaving my opponent without any counterplay, guys. And this is what I do in tournaments. I don't want to be the fancy, look for the fancy combination. No, no, no. Just if I'm winning, I want to stay away from trouble. So let me just do this. And I'm going to try to just push my pawn. And that's going to give me 
uh, enough complication for them. So this move might be coming. Oh no, they want to double up here. Uh, I think so. This is not good. Okay, let me do. Hmm. Okay, let me do this move. So my bishop is safe. Everything has to be protected. Okay, that's fine. Now let me see if I can create something on this side. So everything is controlled. Maybe I could create something on the king's side where his rooks are not. Okay, f5. Now these are the kind of moves that could get me in trouble. So let me just go. Hmm. Now let me go here. So you see, my king is now exposed. If those rooks come over, uh, that might be tricky. I see that I have shelter here, but okay. So now I'm liking this. Um, let me go here. Now I see that light squares are weak, so I want to put my bishop here, and then my queen comes over. Ah, so they saw it. And now this should be pretty easy. Uh, well, I'm just gonna just go with with this. Now, guys, I know you might be thinking, okay, this was an extremely easy position to play, but I want you to give it a try. Take this same position and play it against the computer, and try not to do the same moves I did. <laughs> so, okay, let me see. Let me activate my queen, check. Check. Now, let me bring my king. Maybe I could do something like this. That would be very fancy, but maybe not. Okay, so he has that. Now, still, I wouldn't be surprised if the computer finds a way to to get me in trouble. Okay. Now it looks like they don't have much to do here, so it's not fair to the computer, but. Okay, they're running away. Where are they going? Mm. Okay, check. I don't want him to go anywhere, but I also don't want to get checkmated, so I have to be careful. If I go here, h3, I go back. No, 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 no. Check. Check. All right, just keeping it simple. You see, I don't want to get myself in there trying to do the, the nice checkmate. No, let me get the pawn. I know this is sufficient to make it easy for me. Um, let me see. f4, pawn, pawn, pawn. Yeah, let me just go for it. Okay. Worst case scenario, I just sacrifice my queen for that for that rook. Okay, check. I have my pass pawn. Check. And now, guys, this should be pretty easy. Just sending the the pass pawn up. If anything, I take with a check. I take again. Okay, let me just push. Now, let me use this opportunity to do check. And that's it. You see, I'm just simplifying the game, keeping it simple. Now I just push. And I'm going to just leave it here, guys. I'm not even going to try to keep this pawn uh, because this should be pretty easy to finish now. So I'm going to drop it here just not to make the lesson too too long for, for no reason. So again, guys, just if you were doing it, excellent. If you weren't, try to do this. Whenever you're doing your tactics on your chess book or even if you do it online, Take the position after you did the tactic and say, okay, would I be able to finish this game against the strongest person alive? Because if you're already up or up by significant material, you should be able to know how to do that. And the more you practice it, the better you get at it. So guys, like always, let me know if you have any questions, any comments. If you didn't find this helpful, I really want to know. So I look forward to, to your comments and I'll talk to you in our next lesson.